Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about decimal versus double number types. Lots of people ask me why they shouldn't use the decimal type, and that's because, well, decimals, it, it's cool. It has its place, but you got to know how to use it. There's some specific things you have to, to know to use a decimal number type properly. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that in this video. All right, this question comes to me from Avery in Burlington, Vermont, one of my Platinum members, but I literally get asked this probably once a month. Avery says, I'm new to access. I create a field to hold the number of gallons of fuel a particular vehicle used and selected the decimal data type, which a lot of people do. They see decimal, okay, all right. I tried typing in 5.5 .5 and it just rounds to five. What's the problem? I thought decimal values could have digits after the decimal point. You'd think, right? You'd think if you're a new access user and you went in and you picked decimal, you'd be able to type in some decimal values, but it's not that easy. <laughs> All right, before we get into the details, if you haven't watched my data types video, go watch this first. It's free. I go over all the different types of data types and which ones you should use for which situation. So go watch that first. And I literally just did this video not too long ago about number field sizes where I talk about there are generally two types of numbers that you should work with. If you're dealing with counting numbers, stick with long integer. And if you're dealing with Decimal values stick with double, not decimal. All right, so go watch this one too. And of course, I also talk about this topic in my free four hour long access beginner level one class. So go watch that too. Okay, but here's the problem. I see a lot of people do this. You come into your table, let's say the customer table. Let's look in the order table. We use customer table all the time. And you want to put the number of gallons down here. Okay, gallons. And so you come over here. All right, you need a number. All right. Now, the first thing people do is they stick with number. They don't realize it's a long integer. They save it. They come in here. They try to type in their gallons, 5.5. And, oh, it gets changed to 6. It got rounded up. That's I don't want that. So let's go back into here and figure out what's wrong. Okay, gallons. It's a number. Let's drop this box down here. And I say, oh, there's decimal. All right, decimal's got to that's gotta work. Got to let me have uh, values after a decimal point, right? That's the I mean, it's right in the name, decimal. So let's give that a try. Save it. Come back out here. Let's come back over here. I got to put 5.5 in and ah, ah, it chopped it off to five. What's going on here? 1.1. 1 .1. I, why can't I put any decimal values in a decimal field? Well, this is why. If you go into here, you go in the properties, you'll see there's two properties right here called precision and scale. Now, Decimal values, like I said, they have their place. Their place is for like really advanced scientific stuff or, or super duper accounting people or mathematicians, okay? You can specify the total number of digits in the number, which in this case, the default is 18. And you can specify the scale. The scale is how many digits you get after the decimal point. Now, I think it's dumb that Microsoft defaults that to zero. I'd like to see that at least maybe three. All right, the total for the two of those, the, the biggest value you can have is 28, okay? So you're basically saying now I can, I can have three digits after the decimal point, all right? Save it now, come back out here, and now I can type in 5.5 .5 and I'm good, okay? I can type in 5.666 and I'm good, but I can't type in 5.9999, it'll get truncated off, okay? Now, my advice to you, if you're a beginner, is to stick with double. They're easier to deal with. They're a lot more universally accepted, okay? You got to know what you're doing to work with the precision and scale of a decimal type value. And especially if you get into any kind of other calculations or programming or whatever, doubles just work better in most cases. All right, now let's get into the nitty gritty. Now I, now, now I showed you what's going on. Let's talk about doubles and decimals in a little more detail. All right, so as I mentioned, if you're a beginner with access, don't use decimal, all right? It's, it's, it's tougher to deal with, is more than I just mentioned, but that's the basics of it. Stick with double, it's easier to deal with. Decimal is specifically designed for scientific or financial applications that demand exacting precision, all right? But it is more difficult to use. And like I said, by default, decimal values don't allow values after the decimal point, which I don't know why Microsoft did that. I, I would have liked to have seen maybe a default of like, I don't know, a precision of, uh, of 10 
and a, a scale of three or four. But that's that's just me. I don't know. Maybe someone out there knows why they chose to make it zero and confuse everybody. <laughs> now, what's the big deal between the two? Well, double is what's called a floating point value, where that decimal point is floats around. It can move. You can have one digit. You can have 10 digits after it, okay? You can store much larger numbers, much bigger numbers, and we'll talk about the specifics in a second for the nerds out there, all right? But with less precision, oops, someone beamed in. All right, you get less precision. You can't, you know, make exactly the number of decimals that you want after that decimal point, the number of digits you want, right? Uh, plus doubles are prone to rounding errors. And we'll talk about rounding errors in just a second too. Now, decimal values, they're fixed point values, which means you specify exactly where that decimal point goes. You can have this number of characters on the left, this number of characters on the right, and that's it, okay? They store smaller numbers than doubles, but with exact precision. So you know exactly how many decimal places you're getting. And they are not susceptible to rounding errors. So if you're landing a probe on Mars, you know, you know what you're doing, you might want to use a decimal. I, I would hate for my, my Mars probe to fail because of a rounding error. Oh, kind of like how, uh, you know, uh, we had a Mars probe fail because of a metric to, to English conversion error. Yeah. Why are we not using metric yet, people? Everyone else does. Okay. Anyways. All right. For the nerds, here are the specs. There's double and decimal. There's also this other one, the, the, the little cousin of double called single. Single is basically a half size double, roughly roughly half the size, roughly you can see. Here's the number of places, the number of bytes, right, that it takes up in computer memory. There's the range, plus or minus 3.4 times 10 to the 38th power. That's what that means there. It's a pretty big number, right? 3.4 with 38 zeros after it, okay? Well, 3.4 3 times 10 with 38 zeros after it. So it's a, it's a pretty big number. Doubles can go much bigger, 308 zeros after that right and they can also hold really really tiny numbers too these aren't the exact precision but it's it's one over some crazy large number like that too so you can get really really close to zero as well okay these are both floating point numbers though so they're prone to rounding errors whereas decimals they take up more space 12 bytes but it's 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 27th power and it's fixed so you can specify exactly what kind of precision you're dealing with Right. Why would you want to use a decimal value? Well, scientific applications, right? You need exact calculations down to very small fractions with existing specifications. Accounting, right? You're dealing with specific fractions of a penny. You don't want any of those uh, Superman 3 slash office space rounding errors, right? Or you're a mathematician. I don't know. <laughs> Mathematicians like things exactly, even more so than accountants do. All right, so the max precision of a decimal value is 28 digits on the left and right, okay? And you can specify the scale, which is the right side. Uh, these were introduced in Access 2000 and later. So if you're still using Access 97, I don't know why you're even on YouTube. Um, <laughs> they store exact numeric values and they are not susceptible to floating point errors. Now... What's a floating point error? Well, this is pretty fun. Let's do this. You ready? All right, let's turn this back into a double real quick. And let's call it D. All right, D will make this a double. Dub, dubba? What's a dubba? Double. Okay. Save it. Come back in here. It's a double. All right. Let's create a query. Create. Query design. Bring in that order table. Bring in D. Okay, run it. All right, there's our double. Okay. Now, in the query, we're going to calculate D minus 1. So right next door here, we'll call it X, and we'll say it's D minus 1. Okay, run that now. All right, that looks good. That looks good. Values like 100, that works fine. Negative 90, that works fine. Okay. Now try 1.001. All right, 1.001. And as you can see, that is not correct. Okay, it can't literally can't subtract one from 1.001. That's a floating point error. It's rare, but it happens. And like I said, for most applications, it's not going to cause that big of a deal. But if you're dealing with, you know, 
something scientific y and you're landing a probe on Mars, you might not want to have to deal with that. Okay, now do the same thing with a decimal with scale of three. So let's do the same thing, but let's switch it over to a decimal value. All right, so come back in here. Oh, not in the query. Leave the query alone. Let's 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 save the query. All right, we'll just save this as Q. Hello, Q. All right, let's go back into here. Design view. We're gonna change this now to a decimal. All right, let's make it 18 with a scale of three. Save it. Now you get the some data may be lost because doubles can be much 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 bigger than decimals. So it's warning you. Hey, if you got numbers that are too big for this, they're gonna get truncated. You sure you want to do that? Yeah, go ahead. Now let's take a look. All right, all of our values look normal. That's fine. That's what we had before. Let's run that query now. And oh, look at that. It was able to subtract 1 from 1.001 because it's got exact fixed point decibels in there. Okay? So I hope that I hope that shows you, you know, if, if you need exact, you know, specific number of decimal points, go with the decimal. All right? Now, Double does have some other problems. In older pre-2003 versions of Access, Double's had some issues. They wouldn't sort correctly in descending order. I don't know why, but they didn't. And uh, Double's wouldn't export correctly. Sometimes they, they got changed into text values. But I've just tested both of these, and it's currently 2023, and this doesn't seem to be a problem anymore. And I don't mean to, uh, you know, drop the hammer on doubles. I use doubles. I don't, I, I really don't, haven't built any applications where I've needed a decimal. I don't do anything super scientific-y though. If, I'm, if you're working with numbers, first of all, you should use the currency uh, data type for money. If you're going to be working with money, use currency. It's specially optimized for money values. All right, but doubles, they're easier for beginners to work with. You know, most functions are, are will, will more readily accept double than decimal values. Um, floating point errors, even though they're possible, they're rare. But it's not going to come up all the time. Uh, doubles are faster and take up less space, although with modern computers, that's really not a big deal unless you got millions and millions of records. And they do store really, really ridiculously good-looking... Oh, no, that's a different movie. They store really, really ridiculously big or small numbers. I mean, again, I've never had a need for numbers that large in any practical database. So, even even the scale of the small, even the scale of the smallest one, the the, the singles are are just fine for me. So, and oh, one more thing about decimals: there is no decimal data type in VBA. So, if you're doing any programming, another reason to stick with doubles because you can use doubles in VBA. If you got a decimal, you got to use a variant for it or convert it to a double with the CDBL function. So there you go. There's the basics of why you should stick with double unless you absolutely need a decimal, right? If that scientific precision or accounting precision is important for you or whatever numbers you're working with and you know what you're doing, then use a decimal. If not, stick with double. There's two types of numbers you should use. Long integer and double. Just just worry about those. Don't worry about any of the rest of them and use currency for money stuff. Okay, you got it? Okay. All right, so that's going to do it for today, folks. There is your tech help video. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. 
you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members, Get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.